This uh, video is going to be on the speed of waves, and it's actually a review of first semester, which is nice because we have a, a year-long final coming up in one month. We're in a final that's going to be on the entire school year starting in August. So solve for the velocity of a wave using our old velocity formula. That's what you need to do today. And explain why waves travel at different speeds in solids, liquids, and gases. Uh, those look familiar. So this is wave speed on page 13 in your notebook. And as it turns out, waves travel almost always at constant speeds. And once they're put in motion, they stay in motion. They tend to lose energy, but they don't slow down. As we observed on the global tsunami video with the map and the progress around the globe, the energy of the wave goes down by the time it hits South America, but the speed is constant. So we can use this constant speed formula if we know, say, distance and time, we can find out the speed of the wave. And this is one type of problem that you're going to see on, on this uh, next quiz. You'll see an example where you have to use this formula. So let's watch this. Starts right here. Travels, travels, time is ticking, time is ticking, time is ticking. About seven hours to hit Madagascar, but it keeps going. The spread is constant, but now it's losing energy. So here's a question, a sample test question. What was the velocity of the Indian Ocean tsunami if it took about seven hours to travel from the epicenter to Madagascar, a distance of 4,400 miles? Well, distance equals 4,400 miles. Time equals seven hours. Velocity equals 4,400 times 7, divide by 7 here, and what do we get? 628 miles per hour. So it's pretty direct. You'll see um, examples where you're given distance and time and or something, and you'll need to find another idea about the wave. Okay, something else to know though is that sound travels differently in different mediums. Recall mediums are the thing that waves need to travel on. Without air, without the medium of air, a wave won't be able to go anywhere. This is true, this happens because if we take a look at the molecules. What happens is the energy has to pass through molecule to molecule. So this molecule gets energized and it travels and bumps into this one and sends the message and then goes on, bumps, goes on. Well, this traveling not only makes the wave lose energy faster, like things get quiet really fast in the air, but it takes time too. So this means it's going to be slower going from molecule to molecule. In water, the message is sent really fast, and it loses a lot less energy, which is why the ocean waves can travel so fast. So this is fast. And metal, they're like right next to each other, and the waves just fly through, and the waves go really long. That's why you can put your uh, ears on a train track to hear if a train is coming, even if it's miles away, because it's traveling along the metal. So the metal is fastest. Here's some examples. In air, average velocity is about 340. And then in water, 1,400. In iron, up to 5,000 meters per second. That's like 100, around 100 miles per hour around there. It's not super close, but that's really, really fast. Because it's all about how far does the molecule have to go to send the message to the next one. Also, when things get warmer, here's some review. Their molecules move faster. We learned last unit that temperature is just a measure of molecular motion. So if the molecules are moving faster, then they can send the messages faster to the next molecule. In other words, 
Sound will travel faster in warm stuff and slower in cold stuff. So the, the, the speed of sound actually is different when it's cold or hot outside. Here's our last example. This is an echo problem. Uh, we're looking at bouncing and returning back. Waves can come in. Whoa. Bounce off a surface and come back. Whoa. And we hear it again. This is called an echo. So let's take a look at an echo example. You're visiting the... Oh, lost my dude. Oh, he looked so good, too, with his little screaming mouth. You test the distance by timing how long it takes your echo to return to you. We know the velocity is 340 meters per second. How far away, distance is our question mark, is the canyon if it takes four seconds for your sound wave to hit the wall and come back? We want to find this distance right here. I'm going to show you the mistake most people make first. So just watch this part. Don't take notes. But I do want you to write out this problem and draw it afterwards. There's not much notes on this page. A common thought is to go, well, the velocity equals 340. Wait, distance equals question mark. Velocity equals 340. And time is 4 seconds. Well, then the distance must be 720 meters. That's wrong. Because the echo is there and back. So you found the distance to travel to the wall and back. But we want to only know the distance to the wall. So you just divide this number by 2. Oops, I did the math wrong on here. Let's check this out. So if you use the total time, what we should really do is go back 340 times 4 equals. So sorry, we would say, well, I think the, the distance is 340 times 4, and that's 13 something. Thirteen sixty meters. But what I really need to do is distance equals three forty times two, because it's a there and back. So I just need to cut the time in half, because I only want the distance to there. I only want one side of distance. So the distance is actually what I got originally, 720 meters. So this is your big move. When we're looking at echo, an echo is a there and back time. But when you want to find the distance to whatever it bounced off of, we need to cut the time in half. All right, there's some practice problems, and we'll have a quiz when I come back on Wednesday.